Hey VB Nation, all of YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick with VectorVest back with you once again for a brand new part to our series, the technical analysis series. So the last few weeks we've been looking at MACD and also stochastic oscillators. So we've been talking about a lot of different oscillators in general. So to keep with that trend, this week we're gonna be taking a look at the detrended price oscillator or DPO. We're gonna be covering two specific ways of how to use the DPO to enhance your trading. So if you're ready to learn more about it, as always, smash that like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithms. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, so that way you can stay up to date with all that's going on here at VectorVest. And without further ado, let's jump right into it here today. All right, welcome back, everybody. So as I stated from the very beginning, we're gonna be taking a look at the DPO or the detrended price oscillator here today. There's two primary ways to utilize this indicator, one which we'll discuss on how to use it right now effectively in the current market environment, and two on how to use the VectorVest system to make it easier to find stocks that you'll be interested in the future taking advantage of. So starting off with Investopedia, looking at the general way of understanding DPO. So the DPO or the detrended price oscillator is a technical analysis tool that strips out the price trend in an effort to estimate the length of price cycles from peak to peak or trough to trough. And then as we stated before, we've been using stochastics, we've been using MACD. So to keep up with the oscillators, we're gonna finish off with DPO here. And while DPO is a little bit different in the sense that it's not a momentum indicator, it can help us identify when the market may be starting to look for a top and when the market may be starting to look for a bottom in the historical sense. So if we scroll down, essentially there's a lot of information about DPO, mainly about how it's calculated and the article repeats itself quite a lot. So to quickly summarize for everybody viewing right now, the DPO is essentially a 20 period moving average. Obviously that could be adjusted, but we'll go with the 20 period for today's example. And it's looking for the price action to be above or below that point. And that's represented in the graph here with the zero line being that simple moving average, for example. So basically it allows us to identify if the stock is above that level, then that stock is in an uptrend. And if the stock is below that moving average, then the stock would be in a downtrend. And while that is nice to know, this really goes into, yes, it's in an uptrend or a downtrend, but when are those peaks most likely to occur? Now, the other way of using it that we'll take a look at, mainly with the VectorVest Unisearch tool, is looking for the DPO to be above or below a certain level. So here on commodities.com, it talks about the DPO technical indicator attempts to show overbought or oversold levels. It may also be used to indicate potential buy and sell signals, which we'll see here in a moment. But then bullish or bearish, when the DPO is above that zero line, it means the price is above its moving average, typically interpreted as a bullish sign. And when it's below that uh, level of zero, that indicates it's below the moving average or historically showing a bearish sign. So now that we've covered that, hopefully you guys have a relatively good sense of what the DPO is doing. And let's use that and move forward with the VectorVest charts. So I'll get out of here, jump into the VectorVest 7 software, and right now we are in the unit search tool, but we're gonna start off in the graph section, mainly with the market timing graph. So here you can see, I have the price shown in candlesticks, and then I have the DPO at the bottom. So what we were talking about at the very beginning is the DPO is a great indicator to use to identify potential peaks and also troughs in the market. So that way you can have a good sense of knowing when to tighten up your stops to lock profit in towards the peaks, or if you're looking to get into a stock that may you, maybe you missed out on the very beginning, you're looking for a new entry, well, you could time it by keeping an eye on when the stock is showing oversold conditions or when that trough lines up with historical troughs. So from a broad market perspective, today we're gonna to start off taking a look at the market timing graph or the VectorVest composite. If you're not a VectorVest subscriber, the VectorVest composite, which is the price shown in here in candlesticks, is an arithmetic indexed average of about 9,200 stocks that we track in the US market. And this gives you a better representation on what's actually going on in the market because it's not just looking at the Dow's 30 or the NASDAQ's 100 or the S&P's 500, but it's taking into account 9,200 stocks. So as we all know, November of last year, over 2021, 
was pretty close to the peak of the current market that we've had so far. Since that point, markets have been steadily moving lower. We have had a little bit of an uptick recently, but we'll see how that plays into the current DPO settings right now. So before we jump into it, as you can see on the right hand side, I have a DPO of 20, which is the industry standard for the most part. So the way we can calculate this is I'll use the crosshair cursor. We can see the peak came right around the beginning of November. And then the market continued to landslide for a little bit and looking at the longer term trends just to make it a little bit easier for everybody to visualize out there. We had the next peak right around the end of March, beginning of April. So you have November to December, December to January, January to February, February to March, March to April, five months. Well, if we go from April to May, May to June, June, to July, July to August, August, September, five months. If we go over here, we're coming into the end of August currently. And what do we see? Another peak showing with the DPO right around the middle of August so far. Now, you're starting to see the market pulling back recently. So this would time up historically with the peaks of the markets showing potential time frames, give or take a week or two on either side of when you should be tightening up your stops or looking to protect some of your profits. Now it's not gonna be an exact indicator and as a lot of the materials out there about DPO state, you should always use this in uh, conjunction with other technical indicators, which once again, we'll get to later on in the series. But for now, I figured this is definitely something that a lot of people out there, especially people who are fearful with what the Fed has been talking about, uh, with tightening, the economy slowing down, this could be something of use to a lot of viewers out there. Whenever you see this and you know that we're in that period that we're close to a potential peak, you may be inclined to tighten up your stops, especially if you have some decent gains in your positions, instead of watching that dissipate and give all those gains back. So that is the more common or traditional sense of how to utilize the DPO is by using it to time peaks and troughs inside of the market or on an individual equity. But to keep it simple for you guys, I just wanted to use the broad market for this example and show how it's pertinent for right now in this current situation that we're in. All right, so now that we've got all that covered, let's take a look at it from, from another perspective on how to identify stocks that are in an uptrend or in a downtrend in a matter of seconds utilizing the Vectorvest 7 Unisearch tool. So we'll go into the Unisearch tab at the top. And on the left-hand side, once again, as we've stated the last few times, we have this ProTrader folder here that has lots of different technical scans already pre-built. And to utilize this tool, you do have to have the ProTrader add-on feature to the Vectorvest 7 software. You can also create your own custom scans using technical analysis as well, as long as you have that ProTrader tool. So at the very top of the list, you can see we have the 20 day DPO long and the 20 day DPO short. So if you recall what we were talking about previously, if you're looking for a stock that is turning into an uptrend, well, you're looking for that 20 day DPO to cross above that level of zero. And if the 20 day DPO crosses below that level of zero, that would indicate a bearish trend. So we'll take a look at the longs for today, but if you're a user, you can also take a look at the shorts, especially in this current environment, knowing where we're at with the potential peaks. So we'll just double click on a search. It'll automatically pull back all the stocks that are having this pattern or having this technical indicator break above that level of zero as of right now, therefore saving you hours upon hours, doing all the work for you so that way you get to reap the profits from it. So as you can see, it's sorted by our master indicator VST. It's looking for the 20 day DPO crossing above zero within the last one day or as of today. And then as always, price is greater than a dollar, 100,000 average volume, no penny stocks, and also no contra ETFs in this list. So once we've got that list, we'll go ahead and graph all at the very top. And starting off in the list with our very first stock, AZO or AutoZone. So one of the first things you can notice is the peaks and troughs. So you can see the major overbought, oversold conditions whenever you're at these peaks or troughs. But one of the other things you can do is it gives you a better way of visualizing when the stock may be running out of steam as well. For example, if you imagine a moving average going through here or a straight line, we'll just use the freehand line for an example. You put this line here it's representing the difference between this line, which 
is supposed to be representing the 20 day simple moving average and the price. So as that moving average is continuing to move higher, every time you're seeing a lower high in the DPO, that's actually indicating the stock is pulling away less and less from that moving average. When you break below a moving average, that's generally looked at as a bearish move. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Just wanted to visualize that for you guys out there. But looking at it here, on the most recent time frame with AZO, every time in this most recent cycle, we broke down below that level of zero, it quickly came back. So right now, broke below that level of zero, starting to come back. But once again, if you wanna increase your performance and make sure you're buying at the right time when you have the odds in your favor, make sure to follow the market timing so that way you know exactly when to be getting in and when not to be getting in. When you combine the, this sort of technical analysis with that overall market view that VectorVest provides, it can greatly increase your performance over the long term. So moving on to the next one, we have O'Reilly. You can see peak here, peak here, pulling back. May wait a little bit, see if it goes any lower, but if it starts pulling away and you combine it with some other technical analysis, plus maybe you have the market moving in your favor, this could be a decent one to keep an eye on. Moving on to the next one, HCCI. You can see these long peaks here. So therefore, maybe look to uh, coincide these troughs with some sort of oversold analysis as well. That could increase your performance, help you identify a perfect entry. Moving on to the next one, COST. You can see the clear peaks that we've had here pulling back a little bit, may wait for that trough to confirm itself in the same time frame, and therefore giving you a good opportunity to get in after the stock has been beaten up a little bit, lowering that price, therefore helping you cut down your average or your cost there. And then last but not least, we'll take a look at one more, STR. You can see it's been below that level of one, starting to come back. Now you do wanna see that the stock can break out of this sideways move here as well, getting some confirmation, plus having the market moving in your favor as well will definitely help boost that performance too. Uh, but overall, if the market was moving higher, this may be an interesting one to keep an eye on. So once again, thank you all for tuning in here today. I hope you found this useful. Let me know your thoughts about DPO down in the comments below. Also, let me know what indicators you guys wanna see next. Do you want to see more oscillators or what specific types of indicators are you really looking for? Your feedback goes into the decision process of what to create next. So I really want you guys to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below for that. So on that, it's been my pleasure being with you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your trading day. Take care. Adios and toodles.